Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be proving an inequality. We're given that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to 1 and abc are all real numbers. And we're supposed to prove that ab plus ac plus bc is greater than or equal to negative 1 half and less than or equal to 1. So there are two inequalities here that we are supposed to prove. Let's start with uh, the right hand side, which is basically this one. All right. So in order to be able to prove that, of course, I'm going to uh, consider the fact that this is equal to 1 and I do have a 1 here. So just pay attention to that while I go through the proof. Sometimes when you write these kinds of proofs, people are saying like, how on earth would someone come up with that? Well, a lot of times you start with what you're trying to prove and pretend that it's true and then you kind of work your way towards something meaningful and then you kind of work backwards. So it's not like all of a sudden you discover a really bright method. Sometimes you might, but anyways. So here's what I'm going to start with. We know that Anything squared is non-negative. So a minus b quantity is squared plus a minus c quantity is squared plus b minus c quantity. So these are, this is kind of like a sum of three squares and this can never be negative. So it's always greater or equal to zero. Of course, a, b, c are real numbers, right? So let's go ahead and expand this. a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, a squared minus 2ac plus c squared, and then b squared minus 2bc plus c squared, and this is always true. So we start with something we know is true, and then we just proceed until we get something that helps us. Here we can basically add 2a squared, 2b squared, and 2c squared, and from that we're going to subtract 2ab, 2ac, and 2bc. Notice that everything is uh, multiply by 2, so we can basically divide everything by 2 and put the a, b, a, c, and b, c on the right hand side. So allow me to do that um, at once. I hope you don't mind. I'm basically dividing, well, I, I guess I can do the following. Let me not skip any steps here. Let's just divide everything by 2 and then add a, b, a, c, and b, c on both sides. It's going to look like the following a squared plus b squared plus c squared is going to be greater than or equal to a, b, plus AC plus BC. Notice that everything with a negative sign will be on the right hand side and they'll be negated. So that, therefore they will be positive. So how does this inequality help us? Well, remember uh, I told you to pay attention to the fact that A squared plus B squared plus C squared equals one because that's the only given that we have. And notice that it pops up here. Therefore we can just replace this quantity with one since it's one. And that gives us AB plus AC plus BC is less than or equal to 1, which is one of the inequalities we were trying to prove. So we're halfway done. Yay, what's the other half? Let's go ahead and take a look at the other half. So the other half, the second half, basically can be proven using this identity. Again, we are using something well known. Something squared needs to be greater than or equal to 0 if a, b, c are all real numbers. And they are. Now, how do you expand this like trinomial squared? That's going to be a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And then plus two times, there's a quantity, right? a, b plus a, c plus b, c. And then, of course, we know that this is always greater than or equal to zero, no matter which form you write it in. Awesome. What does this tell you? Well, here's the the same thing again. a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals one. So you kind of need to pay attention uh, to the givens in the problem, right? So why did they give this to you? So you can use it. Now this gives us two times the quantity AB plus AC plus BC plus one is greater than or equal to zero. I almost wrote less than or equal to zero. Okay, that is greater than or equal to zero. Now I would like to get the AB plus AC plus BC, you know, just by itself. Let's go ahead and do it. Uh, so I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. May I skip one step here? Subtract 1 and divide by 2. And that's going to give you the following. AB plus AC plus BC is greater than or equal to negative 1 half, which is the other half right here. This is what we just proved. Awesome. So we're done basically, right, with inequality. Yay, the proof is complete. Since this is an N type of inequality, we proved that AB plus AC plus BC is greater or equal to negative 1 half and less than or equal to 1. Um, so we can basically write the conclusion as this proves, this shows 
that this quantity is less than or equal to one and at the same time greater than or equal to negative one half. So proof complete. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and check if these values are actually attainable, right? So you may prove an inequality, but what about the limit values, right? So let's go ahead and uh, see if these values can be attained. So remember, we were given that so this, this was the most special given, right? The sum of the squares is equal to 1. So if a, b, c are all equal, obviously, and if they are positive, so we can safely say that if a equals b equals c, and let's say each of them is equal to square root of 3 over 3, which is, by the way, 1 over root 3, then from here you can just find a, b plus a, c plus b, c. It's basically going to be like 1 over root 3 squared multiplied by 3, which is 1. So this kind of shows you when a, b, c are all equal, we are able to get 1 from here. Sweet. So when they are the closest, obviously, when they're equal, that it's, we're going to get the maximum value. That's another question you might ask. What is the maximum value and what is the minimum value, right? So let's see how we can get the minimum value. Can I just uh, assume that one of them is going to be large, the other is small? Uh, let's take a look because this requires a little bit more thought. So this was the first part. Kind of checked it out. Let's go ahead and check the second part. So suppose a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to 1 and a b plus a c plus b c is equal to negative 1 half. Now this is kind of like a system, right? Um, we want this to happen obviously. Now this, this is a system because we want this sum to be negative 1 half. So what is that supposed to tell you? Well let's go ahead and do it. Square this quantity and that's going to give you this. From here, we know that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to 1, and this is equal to negative 1, because we want it to be negative 1 half. Remember, our goal is uh, to find out if this value is attainable, so we're assuming that this is true. Anyways, so this gives us what? 0, right? 1 minus 1. So in this case, if you want to get that value, a plus b plus c must equal 0. But what about the particular a, b, c values? Let's go ahead and find, a, you know, candidate like a possible triple. So again, suppose a is equal to 1 half. So from here we get a lot of good information because we know that a plus b plus c is equal to 0. That means that uh, b plus c needs to be negative 1 half. And... Um, b squared plus c squared, because we do know that this sum is equal to 1, therefore it's going to be 3 fourths. So we kind of get a system on b and c, and to keep a long story short, you know, you can just write this one as b plus c quantity squared minus 2bc, and then um, replace the b plus c with negative 1 half, solve for bc, and then write a quadratic, use the, whatever you do, you can solve the system, that should be fairly easy. You get the following b and c values, so this ends up with, um, this gives us the following value. So we get an equation like uh, u squared plus 1 half u minus 1 fourth equals 0. In this case, uh, this indicates negative, uh, the sum of uh, the opposite of the sum, and this indicates the product. As you can see here, uh, this is the sum, and you can get the product easily. And this equation has the following solutions, negative 1 plus minus root 5 over 4. This basically indicates that we assume that, remember, a is equal to 1 half, right? Uh, that was our assumption. So if you consider this, you know, negative 1 plus root 5 over 4 and negative 1 minus root 5 over 4, this triple for ABC is going to give you the minimum value. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.